Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. It's your girl, Sonya McQueen, with It's Your Life. What are you doing with it? So today, y'all, I want to come to you and speak about grace. I want to talk to you about giving grace the same way you want people to give you grace. To forgive others um, from whatever, whatever they've done intentionally or not. So first I'm going to talk to you about what I see grace as. And then I'm going to look it up uh, while I'm speaking to you. I'll look it up online on Google and see what they say grace is. But for me, I believe when you extend grace to somebody, it's giving somebody a thumbs up, a forgiveness, a that's okay, that doesn't deserve it. It's that person that really hurt you and doesn't understand that they hurt you. They'll never apologize, but you still give them grace and you still forgive them. And some of you might be like, okay, that's crazy. I'll never do that. I said the same thing. But the grace really, even though you're extending it to them, it's the same as forgiveness. Everybody doesn't really deserve your forgiveness, right? But you deserve to release people from your mind and that anger so that you can grow and prosper. I'm going to tell y'all something. Forgiveness was the hardest thing for me. You wronged me once, shame on you for the rest of your life, right? I, I was not a forgiving person at all. And I equate that or I believe that was because I grew up with so much disdain. You know, just people doing wrong and acting like it never happened. So when it happened to me, there was no way I was going to sweep it under the rug or keep smiling and moving and and working with you and, and, you know, hanging with you. And and I I was just not going to do it. You wrong me, shame on you and get lost. I'm done with you. But the moment I realized why I had to forgive people who wronged me, why it was a must to forgive them, my whole life changed. My whole life changed. You guys don't understand, when you harbor and hold unforgiveness, it eats at you. It eats at you. It eats at your life. It eats at your happiness. It eats at your the way you think think, move, feel. But when you release that person and say, I forgive you, and I've said it before, and I know you've heard it from other people, forgiveness doesn't mean, oh, now now we can vibe again. Now you can be in my life again. No, you forgive some people and just let them go. Like a bird, you just let them fly away. I see grace as the same. I see grace as telling somebody who doesn't deserve it. I hope you're blessed. I hope and pray that things go well for you. I pray that God gives you grace, even though you don't deserve it. Even though you didn't ask for it, I'm going to ask that you get grace. I put grace and mercy almost together. Now I'm going to look up grace because... My definition might be wrong, but this is another one of those podcasts. I don't quite clearly understand why I'm doing it. It was heavy on me, and um, I woke up with this on my mind, and then I listened to my Bible, and it was in there, and so I thought, you know what? I've got to follow the rules. (laughs) So, I'm defining grace. It's actually on being And it says, simple elegance, no, no. In Christian belief, the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. So I think I'm on the right path. We're all sinners and we're all given grace, right? I don't know if we can give grace to each other, um, but I know we can forgive people who don't ask for forgiveness. Maybe, maybe only God gives grace 
and we forgive. I don't know. I don't know, and I will ask somebody the answer to that. But grace is the word that's heavy on my mind. Giving favor to those who don't deserve it is on my mind. You know, maybe it has something to do with the, the road I'm going down now. I feel like I'm not doing enough. Heavily, I feel like there is something else I'm supposed to be doing. And maybe that's tied into this word. Do you ever dream or think of a word and you don't know why? Or dream of numbers and you don't know why? There's this thing called dream moves that sometimes I'll go and look up my dreams. And they're so on point. I didn't look up grace, though, but I'm going to look it up. But I, I do want to ask you all, and maybe the word isn't grace. Maybe it's forgiveness. Extend some, whatever it is. I'm going to stick with grace right now. Extend some grace and favor to somebody. They might not deserve it, but you know, we don't deserve everything we get. God gives me so much grace. I bump my head. I fall off the wagon all the time. All the time. Put me in a car. Put me in traffic in Miami. Everything goes out the window. All that singing Christian music and, and dancing like David and having a good time in my life all goes out the window when I'm driving in Miami. I'm giving the evil look. I'm honking. I am so tempted to follow people, but they shoot you here. And nobody trying to fight. They shoot you here. And why am I trying to fight? Because somebody cut me off in traffic. I'm going to offer them the grace. You know what? You don't know me personally. You just drive crazy. You might not even be from here. This place is a melting pot. You don't know the driving rules everywhere else. So I'm going to extend this grace to you. Even though you didn't ask for it, you probably don't deserve it. I'm going to just move into this other lane. That family member. Yeah, I'm going to put grace and forgiveness hand in hand. And, um, I'll probably have to do a part two to this one, too, because I might be misunderstanding what was being downloaded into me. But that family member who just mistreated you so wrong and they make no qualms about it, extend that grace to them. Pray for them. Pray for the best for them. And in your heart, forgive them, even though they didn't ask for it, because once again, it's for you. That forgiveness is for you. The grace is for them. The grace is you asking God to bless them. Anyhow, the forgiveness is for you to say, you know what? I release you and everything you've done wrong from my mind, my heart, my soul. You're released. I think I get it, y'all. Give that grace. And pray that God blesses that person in spite of themselves. But you forgive for you. So many people really don't deserve your prayers. Or do they? Maybe we don't deserve so many people's prayers. But we get them anyway, right? They still pray for us. I told you guys sometime this week, maybe, or last week, or maybe it's coming, I don't know, about how when I was at my lowest point of my life, I didn't believe I deserved the love of my friends, and I just wanted to push them all away, and it worked. It worked. And maybe they forgave me. But I don't believe I got any grace. I got it from God, though. But I don't believe I got it from them because they were angry with me for pushing them away. They were angry with me in the midst of my self-pity and my sorrow and my brokenness. And much later, they forgave me. The relationships were never the same and never will be the same. They forgave me, but it was so different, right? It was so different. Of course, sometimes you just can't go back to the way things were, but you can be forgiven and move forward. 
Forgiveness doesn't mean inclusion. It just means you're released from my heart, from my brokenness. Because you don't own a part of me. You don't deserve to resonate in my negative feelings and my negative thoughts and hold me prisoner to hurt and pain. I deserve happiness. I deserve to smile. I deserve to move freely. So you're released. Now, I'm going to tell you guys honestly, I, I watched... I watched a show called Court Cam. If you've never watched it, it's people in court and the crazy things they do sometimes to escape or, you know, somebody sitting in court and a family member jumps over the, the little thing and, and comes and starts wailing on them, beating them and, and, you know, the deputies and everybody, the court people, the bailiffs or whatever they're called, jump in and it's just craziness that happens in court. But I was watching one the other day in this guy had killed this man's son. No reason he didn't know him, just in cold blood killed him. And the guy, he was a Muslim, I believe, I'm not sure, but he got up on the stand and he told the young man, I forgive you. I forgive you and I love you with God's love. And he said, God had already known my son was coming home at the age of 22. And who am I to question God? I am just grateful for the time I had with him I forgive you and I will pray for you. And I was crying. But I thought at the end, when that ended, I looked at my husband and said, there's no way I will forgive somebody for killing my child. But that was beautiful. I told my husband, every day I would be putting money on books, telling people, you give this person the worst time in prison they could possibly have every day. I want you to do something to him. And here's another hundred dollars on your books. I would live in my car, I said, to ensure. Well, I wasn't talking to my husband then, but I would live in my car to ensure that person got what I thought they deserved. No grace, no mercy, no forgiveness. Would that really happen, you guys? I don't know. And I'm just grateful I'm not in a place to know. You know, I know too many people who had a child killed personally, people I call friends and associates. I know five of them who've had a child killed. And I know two people who've had a sibling disappear, murdered, and they have no resolution. That's seven people. That's seven too many. Now, the two, I know what, what's on their mind, their loved one. Right? One of them, the, the, they've never found their, their brother, ever found their brother. My friend Janice, to this day, they have no idea what happened to her brother decades ago. My other friend, they found his remains in a storage locker. Of course, they had to do DNA testing because you're talking years later he was found in a storage locker, but they don't know who killed him. And then the other five, you know, you have some people in prison who killed their, their child or haven't been caught yet. Out of the five, two, they have no idea who killed their child. I cannot imagine that kind of pain. I don't want to imagine that kind of pain, but let's just for the sake of this podcast, pretend I was living that. Could I forgive? Could I say the words, I forgive that person to release it from me so I don't carry that? I don't know. But I applaud people who can. I think that that is knowing and loving God to the utmost. I love the Lord, and every day I try to know him a little bit more, but I don't know if he's instilled it in me to be that strong yet, but then again, I didn't think I'd be strong enough to forgive other people who hurt me the way I had, but then again, I didn't know I'd be strong enough to ask for people to forgive me for my transgressions, but then again, I didn't know 
I would be in the position I am in now to tell other people to forgive others. I don't underestimate my growth, my strength, my power, and what's been embedded in me. I don't underestimate where I was 10 years ago, y'all. I'm going to go back to 2012. That's the day I decided to change my life and started this path I'm on here in 2023. 2013 is the year I moved. 2014 was the day I became a new, new, new creature because I was saved at 14. And then I asked for forgiveness again at 2010. And then yet again, I asked the Lord to save me once again in 2014, and I haven't had to ask again. I had to grow up. I had to be a more mature person. I had to be a better friend, a better girlfriend, a better mother, a better grandmother, a better person, and I had to ask Christ to do it. And he has not failed me. So forgiveness was on the radar. Not only asking for it, but giving it. And some people I sent messages to. Some people I call. Some people I just did it from my heart. And knelt down and did it. It wasn't to them. Because some people don't even know they didn't. They need it. Like when I told you the young lady who I lived with. In, in Texas who begged me and begged me and begged me for years to come be with her. And I finally did and ended up homeless. Ended up giving up my child for adoption. I hated her. I blamed her for everything. Not knowing it was my fault. It was my fault. It wasn't her fault. Nobody put a gun to my head and said move. And then when I got there nobody said, even though she said, what she said. You have rights. I could have done so much more, but I felt more compelled. It brought me so much more. It took guilt away from me to blame her. But in 2013, 2014, I forgave her and she didn't even know that I didn't. She didn't even know there was beef. I was like, how'd you know we we were beefing? We were, how'd you not know we were beefing? And we haven't spoken in years, decades. And we were best friends, but she was oblivious to it. And here I am every day carrying this anger in my heart. I, I tell you guys, I promise you, I used to think, man, I'm just going to fly out there and find her. I just got to release some of this anger. And it wasn't going to be verbally. That's how angry I was all the time. Every time somebody read my book and brought her up, I would be angry all over again. Just holding this anger and hatred in my heart for somebody who was oblivious to it all. So sometimes you got to just kneel down and say, I forgive you and keep it moving. Because they don't even know you're not forgiving them. Sometimes you just got to extend that grace and ask God. God, I know they don't really deserve it, but please bless that person. Please release them from whatever's holding them. In Jesus' name. All right, you guys. It's something else when I wake up with something on my mind and I don't quite understand it. But the more I spoke, the more I understood it. Maybe this podcast today is for me. Maybe it's for me. I think I've released everybody. I think I've prayed for other people, but I haven't. And there are a couple of people I've forgiven, but I didn't ask for them to have grace and mercy. And as soon as I end this, it will be done. You guys have a great day on purpose. You know how to find me, Sonia M 
at ledbymotivation.com or ledbymotivation07 at gmail.com. Have a great day on purpose.